morning, everybody, and welcome to our online service. Uh, last week, we spoke about this great invitation of Jesus, and today I want to share around the cost of following Jesus. But before we do, let us just close our eyes. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to be in your presence, for you to speak to us through your Spirit and your Word. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you'll grant us the spirit of revelation and understanding, that we may know you more, that we may follow you, and that you may be glorified through it all. We ask you this, and we thank you for it, in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week, uh, Jesus' invitation to his disciples was simply this, follow me. And to this day, it remains a requirement for all who want to become a disciple of Jesus. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, if anyone serves me, he must follow me. And so in 1 John 2 verse 6 we read, he who says he abides in him ought also to walk just as Jesus walked. And so last week we explored this. The Amplified Bible describes what this following Jesus means so powerfully. It says, if anyone serves me, he must continue to faithfully follow me without hesitation, holding steadfastly to me, conforming to my example in living and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. And wherever I am in heaven's glory, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, my father will honor him. It sounds like an opening scenes in the movie Gladiator where the general speaks to his soldiers just before the battle. It's a really powerful encouragement to actually follow Jesus. But in a certain sense, the day you gave your life to God, you did enter a battle where you move from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, when you pick sides to whom you will belong. We move from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, and the battle begins between the flesh and the spirit, the ways of the world, the ways of the kingdom, and the power of darkness and the power of God. And as in any battle, there is a cost. As the Amplified says, if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in Jesus. This is a reality for many Christians in the Middle East and other places of the world, but also for you and me today. Matthew 16 verse 24, Jesus says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. The cost of following Jesus is not in the fine print. It is so interesting to note whenever Jesus speaks to a crowd of followers, those who are interested, those who are excited to, to follow Jesus, He would always challenge them with commitment. And oftentimes this commitment offends people and they turn away. And here too, Jesus speaks to a crowd and says, but if you want to come after me, you must first deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. And what is interesting, it's not in the fine print. You know, so many times when we order something or register for something, there's always this little box at the bottom, the terms and conditions. You have read the terms and conditions. You must first click it before you can register or receive the product. I don't know about you, but I can't recall if I have ever read the terms of conditions. I just click the box because I want the product. But Jesus is very clear that he doesn't put this cost in the terms of conditions. He puts it right there in the heading. If you want to follow me, it's going to cost you something. And if you're not willing to pay the cost, you cannot be my disciple. In Matthew 16, verse 24, Jesus makes it so clear. In the Amplified Bible, we read the following, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interests, and take up his cross, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me. You see, following Jesus has a cost, and Jesus makes it very clear up front, even before we start following Him. Jesus was quite radical in His communication to make the point very clear. We read here in Luke 14, Jesus 
speaking to a great multitude that was excited about Jesus and wanted to follow him. Now a great multitude went with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet who comes against him with 20,000? Or else, while he is still a great way off, sends a delegation and asks for conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Jesus is making it very clear up front to a crowd that is excited to follow him that first you must consider the cost. And if you're not willing or able to pay it, you cannot be my disciple. What Jesus is saying is he's he wants absolute loyalty, complete commitment, no matter what the cost, and if need be, even your life. And if you're not able to do that, Jesus warns us from the beginning, we will not be able to be his disciple. As a matter of fact, Jesus tells a parable of the kingdom. And he says, the kingdom is like a sower that went to sow, and we know it so well. But one of those seeds that was received with joy but did not grow to produce fruit, is those who were among the stones. And immediately as persecution arise because of the word, immediately as the cost of following Jesus became evident, it died. And so too in our own lives, Jesus speaks to the crowd. If anyone comes to me, and three times he uses this, this challenging phrase, that you cannot be my disciple, if you love anyone more than me, if you love your own life more than me, or if you're not willing to forsake all for me, you cannot be my disciple. A very radical language and very clear what Jesus was communicating. Even more challenging is, you know, Jesus often used the term that you must bear your own cross to follow me. Now, some want to interpret this softly, but the cross was a symbol of suffering. And just a few like, a weeks later, to emphasize the point, Jesus carried his own cross to his death for doing the will of the Father, bearing the consequences for doing the will of the Father. Many years later, all his disciples faced a similar death. You must be willing to bear your own cross, your own consequences for following me. And doing my Father's will. And yes, we have different consequences of following Jesus. Praise God, we are not all going to die the way Christ did. But we must be willing to pay the ultimate price if we want to be His disciples. Different for all of us. By God's grace, we live in, in South Africa. and Not in the Middle East. But this is a reality for many of our brothers and sisters. Now, this may be a shock to some unpleasant or too extreme, but as a requirement to follow Jesus, this is exactly what Jesus meant. This is exactly what he said on so many different occasions. And it became a reality for many of his followers in Jesus' generations and even to this very day. Jesus is not looking for martyrs, but he is looking for a commitment and absolute loyalty. And if you cannot give him that, Jesus says, you cannot be my disciple. And in one sense, it makes sense because Jesus came and he gave everything to save us while we were still enemies. He gave his life, the, very, the, most, the most extreme expression of life, of commitment, of love and loyalty. Jesus gave everything so that we may have life and come into the kingdom. And Jesus says, well, if you can't do the same for me, 
you cannot be my disciple. Now, this may be very difficult for some to consider, but for those who were in the military, I guess it sounds quite familiar. When I was in the army, there were two types of soldiers. There were the conscripts, and then there was those in permanent force. The conscripts were forced to be there. They did not volunteer. They were compelled by law to come to the military. And so they were forced to become soldiers. But those in the permanent force, they made a decision. They counted the cost and they wanted to be there. And so throughout the military, you always had these two groups, the conscripts and the permanent force. And it was very interesting. Um, I remember, I, I, I think it was in 1994, uh, I, I was um, not selected. I, I was told to join a unit. It was the Snelle Mobile Reaksimach, the Rapid Mobile Reaction Force. I didn't apply for it. I was just a professional soldier and did what I was told to do. And so I had to join this unit. And what was so interesting about this unit, there was not a single conscript in it. This, this mobile reaction force was kept back where all the other military units deployed in the different townships. We were held back. We were, in case the pauper hits the fan force. And so we were kept back for emergencies. But there was not a single conscript, not a single private in that unit. We were all officers and NCOs. And even the positions that were normally held by the privates were now filled by lieutenants and NGOs. And we only deployed when there was a serious risk. But what was so interesting is no conscripts. Only those who have counted the cost and made a clear commitment were allowed to be in the unit. Jesus is not looking for conscripts. He's not looking for a crowd. He's looking for disciples, people who counted the cost and made a clear commitment to follow him. So too, in this life, we need to realize Jesus and following Jesus entails a cost. And we must be willing to pay that cost. So sadly, we sometimes read the Bible with glasses. Glasses that filters only the nice things, only the things that we want to hear. And sometimes we end up embracing a gospel that doesn't lead us to the whole truth. But if you read it without the glasses on, for what it is, you will discover both the glory and the cost. But there is no glory without paying the cost. And so too, Jesus calls us to a life that will lead to glory, but not without cost. So Jesus is not looking for conscripts. Like Gideon's army, he's not looking for those who are afraid. He's not looking for a crowd. He is looking for disciples. Those who've counted the cost and made a clear commitment. Now I've realized something as I've been following Jesus in my life. It's not just for commitment's sake that Jesus requires commitment. It is because in this life, it is a reality. The moment you start to follow Jesus, the world will react to us. And there is a cost to pay. Jesus warned us about this. In Matthew 10 verse 21, Jesus says, Brothers will deliver brother over to death. And the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this is not just the possibility of death. This is not what it's about. It's about our loyalty to him in everyday life, in the conversations and the decisions that we make. You know, Jesus continues in Matthew 10, he says, So everyone who acknowledged me before God, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I have come not to bring peace, but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against a mother, a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law, and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
And whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. So Jesus is looking for a commitment, not just for the possibility of death, but for our loyalty to him in everyday life, in our conversations and the decisions we make. The opposite of this creep in so suddenly, when, when you decide not to come to church regularly because our children don't want to come. Or we're around the bride and, and in our conversation with our friends, there are certain things that we do not say or do not do because we're afraid of the consequences. The consequences of being different or saying and doing what Jesus would. But because we're afraid of its consequences, we back away. And so we deny Jesus often in what we do not say and do not do because of fear of consequences of being different in this world. But so did Jesus' disciples. Every single one of them, when Jesus was arrested, ran away except for two. And even Peter, that promised, that made a commitment hours before that he would die with Jesus, denied Jesus publicly three times. You know what is so powerful? Jesus went to look for them. When they were hiding away, after his resurrection, he appeared to them. And he said the following, we read of this in 20, uh, John 20 verse 19. On that evening of the day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood amongst them and said to them, Peace be with you. Showed himself to them in his glory. And they were filled with joy. Jesus showed his wounds to Thomas and met Peter on the beach. Restored him completely. He came looking for them. And then he gave them this amazing uh, privilege. He gave them this commission, this final instruction. He said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, I want you to go and make disciples. Not followers. I want you to make disciples. Make a radical commitment for Jesus by baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always. And then something interesting Jesus said. But before you go, guys, I want you to wait. I want you to wait in Jerusalem. Because the promised Holy Spirit, when He comes, He will empower you. He will empower you to be witnesses. He will empower you to do what I've commanded you to do. And so Jesus appeared to more than 500 people. But in the end, there was only 120 in the upper room. I don't know what happened to the 380. Maybe they counted the cost. Maybe they had families and businesses. Maybe the risk was too great. But the 120 that obeyed Jesus waited for the Holy Spirit. Something amazing happened. They were transformed when the Spirit came upon them. And from being afraid, they went outside publicly proclaiming Jesus to everyone. A radical transformation. It wasn't their own ability. It is not our own bravery. But it is God's grace that is made perfect in weakness. If we are simply willing, if we are willing to follow Him, willing to ask Him, He comes in by His grace and empowers us to be the disciples He desires us to be. And so by His grace, we live a life like Christ. And He is glorified through it. And by His grace, we are able to count the cost and bear our cross. At the moment of bearing the cross, God's grace enables us. So we don't need to be afraid. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, if they take you before the courts, do not be afraid what you will say. Because at that moment, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. We read of this in Luke chapter 12 from verse 11. And when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities... Do not be anxious on how you should defend yourself or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. We read of John and Peter when they were captured by the authorities and threatened with prison and even life. We read the following in Acts chapter 4 verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished. And then they realized, they recognized that they had been with Jesus. You see, Jesus, through the Spirit of God, will empower you to be bold, to give you the words to speak, and to be different. There will be grace for every challenge and every cross. And He promised us to be with us always. 
And then over and above all that, Jesus says in Matthew 5, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, or falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. Not only does He promise us grace to carry our cross, He says there's a great reward waiting for us when we are willing to pay the price for following Him. He will empower us, He will be with us, and He will reward us. The only thing that remains is the simple question, are we willing? Are we willing to follow Him? Are we willing to obey Him? Are we willing to dare to ask Him to empower us to be different? And when we do, He will fill us and enable us. And therefore we read in Revelation 12 verse 11, And they overcame and conquered Him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith, even when faced with death. So the question is simply this, are you willing? And if that is you, I want to encourage you to join us. There's a link below that you can register. And we want to walk a journey with you for this year, living a life as Jesus would. We're going to do first a six-week uh, course. So it's a six-week commitment that you make to be equipped, to be encouraged, to follow Jesus. And yes, there's lots of regulations and we'll speak about all those things. But I want you to consider this question. Are you willing to follow Jesus? Are you willing to consider the cost and ask Him to give you the grace that He may enable you to live this life? And if that is you, please register the link below and journey with us over the next six weeks as we follow Jesus together. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we had together. Thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Lord, thank you for this amazing invitation to be your disciple and to learn from you, knowing that you are humble and gentle at heart, and that we will find rest for our souls as we do. Lord, I pray that you will grant us the faith and the trust in you to commit ourselves to you and to follow you wherever you lead us. And we thank you, God, that ultimately that journey will lead to eternal life with you forever. And so I pray for this to be a reality in all of us, in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, last week I was speaking about uh, Any Step by Charles Sheldon. If you're interested in a hard copy, it's available at the office for 60 Rand. So please contact the office and you can collect for yourself a copy. It's an awesome book. It will also help you in this journey to follow Jesus and practically what it means. May God bless you.